So uh, I'm James, and what I have here, I have an environment where I'm running uh, the latest stable release of OpenShift version 4.19. And in my deployment of OpenShift, uh, I'm simulating a small portion of a customer's uh, AI environment. Uh, I'm running in the cloud right now. So in the cluster that I'm currently in, in Amazon, uh, you can see that I have a few different instances of type uh, G4DN and G6E, where G4DN instance types come with an NVIDIA T4 GPU for acceleration of AI workloads, and the G6E instances come with an NVIDIA L40S accelerator. Even though they're both 2x large, you can see that the memory allocation between them is different. So I have some sort of heterogeneous pool of accelerated compute that I need to be able to manage for multiple developers doing different kinds of work. Uh, I do want to call out that this architecture would work just as well if we were talking about bare metal with uh, GPUs and physical servers. It would also work just as well if I were using techniques such as MIG or time slicing for logical segmentation of GPU resources. But today, I'm just going to work with these uh, instance types on Amazon. As a cluster administrator, you can see I'm signed into my own personal account here. And on my account on this cluster, I was able to define a couple of different types of policy resources to ensure that my uh, data scientists had access to what they need. The first example I want to talk about is the cluster queue. This is coming from the Red Hat build of queue operator, which is integrated into OpenShift AI for workloads. Our cluster queue resources define not only the types of resources and the sharing behavior and the priority and preemption behavior for these resources, but also defines quotas. So in this case, because I have two instances with NVIDIA L40S GPUs, I said that my cluster queue could have at maximum two of these GPUs in use. The Q for the NVIDIA T4 instance types is similar and just references a slightly different flavor. Those resource flavors include things such as taints and toleration configurations, as well as node selectors that I'm able to use to differentiate between my two instance types for these cluster queues. Additionally, as an administrator, I defined uh, hardware profiles, which are an OpenShift AI feature that integrates with Q. My hardware profiles come in three flavors. I have one that allows generic CPU and memory. These hardware profiles are intended on a per workload basis rather than the entire cluster. I have two other hardware profiles, one each for my L40S and T4 GPUs. So as an administrator, I know that this cluster has four nodes with GPUs. Each of them has one GPU apiece. This means that one workload can't use more than one GPU. So I was able to define the hardware pro uh, profile policy to ensure that my developers got what they needed. As an administrator, uh, you can see that I have administrative access to the entire OpenShift AI dashboard. I'm able to configure cluster settings, things like that. And one other aspect that I wanted to bring up was to talk a little bit about the NVIDIA DCGM dashboards. These are provided by NVIDIA. Uh, and these dashboards provide a high level view of how the hardware in my cluster is being utilized. Everything from temperature to power utilization to even clock speed to show which GPUs are busy uh, and utilization showing which ones are actively performing work. Right now my cluster is pretty quiet. I have a scenario where I have two different users who are doing very different kinds of workloads. So we're going to explore them one at a time. Uh, on the left, I have my project one user. My project one user has access, uh, first, of, first off only read only access to the OpenShift data science uh, applications or uh, the place where we keep a bunch of shared resources in OpenShift AI, uh, but they also have read-write access to Project 1. Our other user, Project 2 user, has access to Project 2 similarly. These resources uh, views are showing what's available in their current workspaces. The amount of resources they've been delegated is impacting all of this. You can take a look at the generic OpenShift pods that are running for each of these users. Oh, this user was checking out his local queue a moment ago. So this guy has access or has currently running a Workbench and a Quen3 model running in OpenShift AI uh, model serving. This guy has a Workbench up for training. If we look at what we can see in their data science projects through the OpenShift AI interface now, you can see that uh, Project 1 user has a single Workbench up and a single model deployed, and our Project 2 user just has that Workbench up in his project right now. Interacting with this Workbench, this is sort of a mock scenario. These aren't the kinds of work, this isn't the exact work that I would expect these users to be running, but it shows uh, a good amount of information about how the GPUs are being used at least. So for my Project 1 user, you can see that he's running uh, a simple UI in a Jupyter Notebook uh, to interact with the language model. So we can run that code. And then the user is able to chat with the model that we have running and get simple responses directly. Um, because I'm using the Quen3 model, this model is a reasoning model, and we have all the reasoning tokens being output as well. So we can see everything that the model is doing here. You can imagine that in real life, this user might be performing uh, operations on MCP servers and building an agentic application, doing some prompt engineering to ensure that he has an agent that's able to integrate into an application and performing as expected. 
but this simple example works just fine. To show off what those hardware profiles look like from the perspective of the user, first off, all these things take place at the API level, but they're demonstrated for us inside the user interface as well. So it's simplest to see in the self-service mode, the policy that's been defined for this user is that he's allowed to use two of the NVIDIA L40S uh, accelerators. So we can deploy a second model and see in the UI that he has the choice of trying to deploy on CPU only, which won't work so well for a generative AI model. Or he can say, I'm going to use my NVIDIA L40S. He doesn't even see the access to the T4. And uh, we already have a model prepped and ready to go. We can deploy this model pretty quickly. It schedules. We can see the pod uh, start to come up on the node. So one user in a generative AI workspace able to operate on resources that have been allocated to him. Uh, and able to do everything he needs to do pretty quickly and easily in the self-service interface. The other user is doing a very different kind of work. Uh, this user is doing a bit of distributed training. The particular uh, training jobs that I have configured here are mostly, for example, just to show the workloads being scheduled. Uh, this one, for example, uses the MNIST fashion data set, and the MNIST fashion data set allows you to categorize items of clothing from small pictures. Uh, so he's training a neural network, and he's doing so. Actually, we're going to need to grab a new key, so I'm going to do that real quick. This one. We will invalidate this key very shortly just to make sure that it doesn't end up on the stream. But in the meantime, this user grabs his token and authorizes as himself to run these workbenches, these training jobs. And go. The first job schedules uh, this job to be running across uh, multiple GPUs, across multiple nodes. He's configured that he wants one GPU per node, and he wants two workers for this job, for this MNIST fashion training job. Uh, the job takes a little while to spin up as it goes through the admission process, ensures that he has uh, all of the quota that he needs. And we can see that the pods will be starting up here very shortly as soon as the workload comes up. I showed earlier the local queue. And this is a place where, uh, at the API level currently, any user is able to come and look at what resources they've been allocated, how they're consuming them, and how they're behaving. We can see that we have two pending workloads with one reserved. Our one reserved is our workbench. We've got an update. And now I see I have two reserved workloads with one pending. So we saw that we just went through the admission process. The quota was granted. His pods are running. And if we come over here, we can see that the job is waiting to complete as it does the training on the MNIST fashion data set now. Additionally, I did schedule both of these jobs to run at once. So this second job also requires one GPU per node and has two workers. We can see that it was still sitting in that pending state in the local queue. And the pods for the second run are going to stay in that pending state, not admitted, until the GPU resources have been released by his other training job. At the same time, if we look at our project one user, he's still able to chat with the language model that's running on the GPUs that he had reserved. Do you know any good recipes? And all of those resources are working exactly as the data scientists need. He can continue his agentic development or his prompt engineering or whatever data science task he was performing in this namespace. And finally, to clean it all up, we can see, hey, those GPUs are doing some work now. They're doing inference work. They're doing training work. Uh, we're able to see the activity show up right away. And if we come to our cluster queues, we can, at the API level, continue to see the utilization of those resources. Right now, we have one pending and two reserved workloads on those T4 instances for that training job. We saw how much CPU and memory was being used. We had an update. I suppose our MNIST fashion training finished, and the other job is running now. All of this is visible to the administrator. Uh, additionally, more capabilities are going to be coming across the lifecycle of Red Hat AI 3.0, so additional UIs to improve the user visibility into their queues and their consumption, uh, additional UIs for administrators to view the overall cluster-wide utilization, newer capabilities such as multi-queue work and integration with advanced cluster management for Kubernetes to include multiple clusters worth of GPUs and management of those resources, and we'll have more to show you about cohorts and resource borrowing coming up in the future as well.